I'm operating an industrial scale machine tool in a residential setting. Setting this up in a way so I wouldn't cause a nuisance for my neighbors or domestic partner was always a primary concern. I wound up getting a heavy duty steel cart I could roll away into the corner and made sure all points of contact between the machine and the cart were lined with sorbethane to limit vibration. Sorbethane is a special type of rubber that is great at damping out vibrations. Their website gives lots of math for how to properly design a joint to be most effective. I didn't do any of that, I just picked the thickest, hardest arometer sheet that was reasonably priced at McMaster Car. Any thicker than a half inch and the price goes up dramatically. To support the four corners of the machine, I bought two four inch by four inch sheets and cut them each into a pair of L shapes like this. The weight of the machine compressed it about 20%, which is right in the recommended range. Even after three years, it hasn't settled much more than that. Bolting the machine down for safety seemed prudent, but could cause another path for vibrations to travel along, so I also got some thinner sorbethane to wrap around the bolts, and some sorbethane washers for under the head and the nut. Drilling the mounting holes in the cart was the last thing I ever did with my old drill press before retiring it. The results seemed to work pretty good. Although it's ostensibly a drilling machine, I've adapted it for use as a grinder, shaper, and polisher as well, even a saw on occasion. But even when my work gets noisy, I'm not shaking the whole building. Let's do a wine glass demonstration. I've got the machine set for 2400 RPM, which should give us a good rumble. And just to make sure, we're going to give it an out of balance load. I've got similar lighting set up on both glasses, one on the machine. and one right next to the machine. I had initially planned on using an old IKEA nightstand with added wheels as a base. It seemed to be able to support the weight, but I learned this was a bad idea the first time the drawers popped open when I was trying to move it, tumbling it out of balance. So I replaced it with this sturdy steel cart from Global Industrial. I added some low-profile casters from McMaster Car instead of the giant ones from Global Industrial, and also used these slip-on wheel chocks whenever the machine is in use, since the caster locks by themselves don't support it all that well, as they can still pivot. I had a lot of things I needed to store on the cart, but it didn't include any shelves, so I found some maple cutting boards that matched the top to make my own. For the bottom one, I just had to drill holes for the casters, to install the middle one, I had to notch the corners and rip the edges, which has got to be the biggest job I ever completed with my miniature tilt arbor table saw. That saw now lives on the same shelf. Behind it, I store the cast iron adjustable table for my drill press, which I don't use often, and some vices. Here on the back of the lower shelf, I have my jury-rigged closed-loop water system, which is a real tight fit. I should make another video describing that some other time. With all that together in only three square feet, I have everything I need to turn blocks of stone like this into gorgeous polished pieces like this. I'm up to a number 108 now. Anyway, until next time, it's your wacky neighbor. Thanks for watching.